Yeah, my name is Catherine Geiler and really glad to be here with you today. Also would like to pay my respect to uh, the, the land on which we meet today and respect the elders past and present. I'm going to start telling you just a, a little bit of a, about my story. I was born and raised in Colombia and my passion for art has been a, a driving force since I was very young. It all started with drawing, painting and singing while I was in high school and then I decided to pursue art as a career. And I came to Australia to study. I completed a Diploma of Visual Arts at Melbourne Polytechnic and following that I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Master's of Arts Management both at RMIT University and been working ever since in Melbourne. So as I told you on the video, I am a multidisciplinary artist. Over the years I began weaving um, the different ch channels of expression that ultimately really captivate my ideas and who I am. Um, but having this holistic approach um, did take a fair bit of time and dedication and trial and error. Uh, but it's been really important to embrace the different mediums that, that communicate my ideas effectively and, and genuinely connect to, to that creative expression that I want to achieve. And it's been vital to, to, my, to me as a, as a professional, as all of these practices um, have ended up complementing each other over the years. So as I told you, I'm constantly jumping between my studio, the street and music stages. And in the intimacy of my studio, I mainly produce oil paintings, acrylic paintings, and I work in graphic design and digital illustration. And in the public space, I work as a mural artist and musician. But in this talk today, I am going to focus on my practice as a visual artist to give you a bit of background of where, where, I've, been, where I've been working. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the concepts behind my visual work. Um, I do create visual narratives exploring characters, our natural environment and cultural identity. And I also love um, exploring spaces of magical realism. And briefly, I'd like to explain what is magical realism. And this concept was born in Latin America um, as a literary movement mostly, in which authors such as Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Isabel Allende portrayed a, a realistic view of the modern world, world while also having magical or fantasy elements. This allowed for authors to show an alternative to an accepted reality, uh, which became incredibly powerful when challenging and transforming social barriers and conditioning. Now, this, this approach of magical realism is used in many art forms today. And for instance, I base a lot of my concepts on contemporary realities while adding these magical elements and tra translating them into visual signifiers to tell stories. So a little bit about my inspiration, which is a, a question that, that comes a lot um, to me, what inspires you? And just to, to keep it quite simple, I am inspired by the bond between humans and nature and, and more specifically, I am inspired by the processes to help to restore that, that invisible fabric that weaves humans and nature. Um, I'm also very inspired by the empowerment of women, which to some extent I believe um, is essential to heal our relationship with the environment. Um, so with my work, it, it has become a purpose to, to rediscover that, that identity that has been lost um, over time because of the repression and, and the objectification of, of the feminine. And I do believe nowadays we stand in a very, very interesting time where 
women are reconstructing this, this identity and a new identity is coming. And I am interested in that, in that discovery. And definitely feel drawn to, to stories of resilience and, and liberation. Now I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about a few projects that, that had an impact on, on me and my career. Um, my work really evolved as I researched deeper and I participated in, in various exhibitions. And working within the exhibition space gave me a strong understanding of the context in which I was creating and I was working. And because it was more about creating an experience for the public rather than just the work, I began collaborating with other artists, incorporating performance art and, and really uh, looking into, into ways to deliver a quality experience. And these images that you see on this slide right now are images of an exhibition I did called Zero at No Vacancy Gallery. Um, this project really marked me. It really gave me um, uh, a structure or, or an understanding on, of how to, to embody this, this um, experience into the exhibition space. And just in a very simple phrase, that project I used to describe it as um, zero as a metaphor is a reflective mat matrix of the female experience as a source of power. And I'm gonna show you some other works uh, that were presented in this exhibition. These were painted portraits of diverse women, uh, mostly going through experiences of transformation, really an exploration of, of that complex relationship between fra fragility and strength, which, is, uh, which characterizes um, womanhood a lot. That's another painting. I, this, this painting actually was inspired by a trip that I did in the Amazons. And while I was doing a walk with the guide, um, the butterflies were standing on him and his wife. And I thought, oh, how interesting that the butterflies stand on, on you. And, and, and then they told me, well, butterflies do stand on you if you have stillness in, in, your, in, your, in your being. And yeah, so it was a beautiful concept to have that. Um, still in this portrait. Um, in a lot of my work, I incorporate abstract and figurative, uh, and this is to connect with that idea of portraying that side of women which is mysterious, almost like an underworld that uh, has many layers uh, yet to be discovered. This is another one called Flourish. Uh, also an oil painting, reflecting on, on sisterhood, on that powerful bond between women, and, and which is a vital aspect at the end of the day for women empowerment and union. It becomes almost like a detox of all that conditioning that we've received since we're so young and, and we can become allies instead of rivals. And, and I think this is something that I, that I like to focus on my work. Um, I'm showing you here another, some other images of another exhibition I did in 2016. At some point I had also this need to reconnect to my cultural heritage and at the same time produce art that was still relevant to our contemporary culture. And a turning point on my practice was incorporating the use of gold leaf um, our ancestors in Colombia used gold to honor and connect to spirituality and healing processes. This series of work resulted in this exhibition called Treasure of Bachue. And to give you a bit of background, Bachue is a goddess who, according to the Muiscas, who are Colombian indigenous people from the Andes, is the mother of humanity and a source of life and her power or her treasure is, is hidden beneath the feminine underworld. So it was a concept that really um, hit uh, an important spot in my practice. So I'm, I'm also going to show you some 
works, some of the works that were exhibited at that exhibition. These were compositions that really called upon the wild woman, her connection to the land and honored that empowerment of, this, of, of different individuals at different stages of life. Um, as most of my work, uh, these are portraits of real women. And to come back to that uh, concept I talked to you before about magical realism, um, these portraits offer a reality combined with magical elements to tell a story. I did have um, a, a connection to this woman and conversations in which I had insight um, to their stories or, or the moment that they were going through at the moment that I painted them. Um, this one is called Three Races. And yeah, going back to that idea of using gold leaf, um, I was really trying to understand that, that golden space or that space of meditation, transformation and enlightenment. And again, this painting is honoring that bond between women. This one is uh, called The Weaving of Oneself and it's a portrait of a Colombian woman weaver. And indigenous women in Colombia say that they are weaving their thoughts in the world. And, and to me, this is such a powerful concept. Um, it inspires me as they, they're not just weaving their identity and thoughts, but also they're telling stories through their weaving and passing on their heritage to future generations. Uh, so ultimately, this, this is really weaving and embodying the, the, the women and the, the, the weaving and the spirit of the moment. Um, this one here is called seedlings. A lot of the time I do incorporate clusters of seeds in movement around my character um, this is to signify diversity and connection to the land. And also that capacity we have as humans to, to regenerate and plant in different and cultivate in different aspects of our life. This next one is called Daughter of Earth. Again, has the cluster of seedlings around her. And I'm gonna show you some other projects that have inspired me a lot. Um, this one is called La Nina Project. Um, back in 2018, I developed this project in partnership with No Vacancy Gallery. Uh, we created a dynamic platform to promote female artists. And through this platform, we organized a number of group exhibitions, encouraging mostly collaboration and networking among the artists. Um, the art, well, the, it, was, it is an art cross art form project rooted in that same desire to unite diverse voices and explore the feminine as a force of interconnection and, and a new force in art. Uh, the images you see on, on the screen right now are images of the show we did to launch the project, which featured 25 female artists. It was really nice. We had video installation, painting and performance. And I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about some of my recent work. I have been incorporating found wood bark and combining painting with this with wood bark has allowed me to tap into natural cycles of destruction and recreation as I'm really going out for a walk and, and literally picking up the barks that the, the trees have been shedding. So really connecting to that moment where the tree is letting that go to, to grow something new. So these are some of the pieces I've been doing along those lines. And parallel to the studio work that I've been showing to you on the other slides, um, I was developing commissioned murals and design. And here are some examples of, of some private and, and, and 
and public um, murals that I've been doing. Some are in Colombia, so are, some are here in Australia. This mural here we did recently with, um, in collaboration with my good friend and fellow artist Lucy Lucy. I love working with her. Um, and this is in Box Hill Central, quite a playful mural. They really wanted um, a space for people to hang out and kids to play. So basically they're going to activate this like this floor with places where people can sit and, and people will be able to hire um, the space to do community gatherings. So we really enjoyed doing something that bright. And just um, wanted to show you this project because I, I really loved being involved in this. It was a painting community and seeing diversity. We created this project in collaboration with non-for-profit organization Casa Cultura and again Lucy Lucy. Um, the project brings artists and the community together to develop public artworks. Um, through this initiative, we successfully developed this mural you see on the slide. Um, involving the participation of over 80 community members across all ages and cultural backgrounds. This was in December last year. Um, and the final work really embodies the, the stories told by many hands. All the fabrics have all these textures. We really enjoyed doing it. And we were going to do another um, painting community and singing diversity mural in March, but due to COVID-19, we had to cancel the project. But I definitely look forward to to doing more projects like this, um, engaging the community. As I, I think this is really the space where where you experience the power of art as a as a tool for social change. And I guess to to finalize my my presentation, I, I think that in times like this, we, we have to constantly reinvent ourselves and, and I believe art can serve as an aid for that.